Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about whether or not the dismissive avoidant attachment style gaslights in a relationship, and also how to sort of recognize what may be coming up and what to do about it, and some key differences, um, as well as similarities and, and impacts of gaslighting in and of itself. So um, before I dive in, we have uh, just recently released a very in-depth course all about narcissism um, and overcoming narcissistic abuse and how it impacts the subconscious mind and how there's some, some uh, correlation with CPTSD outputs and really how to like regulate our nervous system, how to heal from the traumatic wounds and imprints left. Um, and if you want to do a deep dive into that topic, if this is part of what you're here for, um, check out the link in the description box below. You can access the course for free for seven days, which will be enough time to really go through that course, gain the insights and do some deep, deep healing. So um, does the DA gaslight? Well, first and foremost, it's really important to recognize that all potential may, all people may have the potential of gaslighting, but it is something that is extremely unhealthy in relationships. So in very extreme cases, when somebody's really triggered, feels really ashamed, um, they haven't been doing the inner work, they're not a securely attached style. I've seen in couples where there isn't like this, you know, extremely unhealthy person, but it's an extremely unhealthy behavior that they take part in, or when they feel really ashamed, they're like, that didn't happen, or they deflect, or they scapegoat, which, you know, are all essentially forms of gaslighting. When there's um, the that piece of it that makes you question your own reality and, and what you saw happened. And it's this extreme avoidance technique that, that can take place. But it's something that really shouldn't be held space for in a relationship, in my personal opinion, because there's a few impacts that come out of it. The first major impact um, is that it makes it almost impossible to resolve problems between two parties in a relationship when one person isn't able to take accountability or responsibility for their part in the problem, especially if the other person's bringing that problem up. So it's something that really can't happen on a pervasive basis if you want a relationship to actually last and thrive. And I would say it's actually one of the biggest red flags to pay attention to in a romantic relationship because it really can, can tarnish the bond long-term. And also if you're on the receiving end of gaslighting, it can produce you know, a, a lack of self-trust and self-doubt if it's pervasive. Now, I want to be really clear here. Narcissistic personality disordered individuals tend to gaslight regularly, pervasively, and with a level of conscious awareness. They, they know that they're making you question your reality. They're, they are able to see and reflect on it. It's not from this like traumatized space, like, oh no. Um, I mean, in essence, at a deeper level it is, but it's not this like, I just did this in a really chaotic moment and I messed up and I should have just taken accountability. It's like, you know, oftentimes to manipulate somebody, to make them self-doubt, to, to, you know, make them not want to leave the relationship because they doubt and question their ability to find somebody else or, um, you know, they fear that they can't fend for themselves on their own. It's to actually plant seeds of doubt in the other person's mind as a subconscious strategy for control. Now, in all fairness and honesty, that in and of itself comes from its own tremendous amount of trauma and tremendous amount of wounds at a subconscious level of that narcissistic person. Um, but, you know, there's a big difference between that like intention and that awareness of doing it and yet still continuing to repeat the pattern um, and doing it pervasively and regularly and that just being like a normal part of the interaction versus somebody who in a really weak moment makes a really big mistake and gaslights as, a, as an attempt to scapegoat, to scapegoat, right? So let's say um, it's a dismissive avoidant and they feel so ashamed about something and usually, you know, this never happens in a relationship, but in this one case, one time in your three-year relationship, the DA says that never happened. And they do it in front of somebody else because they don't, they feel ashamed about something you said that they did or whatever it might be, right? You may see like sort of these one-off cases. Now, if you're in that position on the receiving end, it has to be addressed, and the biggest reason DAs do this, so there's two sort of hidden forms in which the DA may gaslight at times. Number one is that, and it's almost always as a subconscious strategy to deflect extreme feelings of shame um, that they don't want to see, feel, deal with because they have such big wounds around I am defective because of emotional neglect in childhood. Um, and so that will sort of be the form. The other experience, and there's a, a type of gaslighting, which we call the silent gaslight. Now, you'll often see a narcissist in a, in a narcissistic relationship with somebody, 
um, use this as a strategy to, again, manipulate the person's behavior and make them really question and doubt themselves. So you may see somebody like, really give extreme silent treatment intentionally um, as a strategy to like make the person think, oh, maybe I was the person who was wrong. Maybe I was the person that should apologize. And then they, you know, the behavior changes and they apologize. And I've seen a lot of people um, bring this up. On, on this channel. And, you know, I want to make a couple of distinctions. There's a huge difference between a narcissist and somebody who's dismissive avoidant. Sure, there can be DAs who are narcissists. Um, I would actually say it's, it's a little more rare. Um, but, um, you know, there's a big difference between the dismissive avoidance relationship to silent treatment and the narcissist relationship to silent treatment. A lot of times narcissists are using the silent treatment as a form of gaslighting, making you question yourself, trying to change or manipulate your behavior. It's a manipulative tactic. For somebody who's dismissive avoidant, however, they often get so shut down and they get caught in this like learned helplessness when they're triggered and they get afraid of conflict and afraid of addressing the problem because they don't have good emotional modeling skills. Um, of seeing people work through conflict, resolve conflict. So usually DAs, because they can be very conflict avoidant, feel learned helplessness around communication and also not feel comfortable or safe opening up and also fear criticism. Sometimes DAs will go into these really strong shutdowns and their relationship to shutting down is not to try to manipulate or gaslight a person's behavior or self-doubt in a situation. It's to avoid conflict and to stay safe. And so again, you know, it's important to recognize that the person on the receiving end of this, um, it's it can have a very similar effect, right? It can be really traumatizing, really hurtful, extremely painful, quite excruciating. And it's important for the dismissive avoidant to recognize that as well, because most oftentimes we project from a perception. A lot of DAs don't realize the, the treachery that the other person, person endures when they're on the receiving end of that deep shutdown or deep stonewalling. Um, but the, the relationship the DA has to it is not so malicious and with the intent to manipulate like it would be from the narcissist. So the two sort of common themes that I will see if a DA does gaslight is that they may do it as a deflection mechanism, as an attempt to scapegoat and avoid really profound feelings of shame. Um, and also, um, you know, when the, the silent gaslight, which is the, the or at least feels like the silent gas, like to the person on the receiving end, um, which is that deep, profound shutdown or stonewalling that takes place that can have that sort of um, incidental outcome. Now, um, again, I just want to repeat, like, you know, different attachment styles can have moments of, of doing this. This needs to be addressed. It's not something that is a healthy pattern to have in a relationship. And if it's happening more than once ever, um, not only does it need to be addressed immediately and actually worked through to the point where once the conversation happens, the person who's doing the gaslighting takes accountability and takes ownership that they did that and apologizes and shares where they were coming from. We're like, I'm sorry, you're right. And I, I lied because I was, I felt so ashamed. I felt so embarrassed. Like there has to be an acknowledgement. And there also has to be a strategy to prevent that from happening in the future. And again, this should not be a pattern. I see gaslighting is actually one of the biggest red flags in relationships because of how impactful on the negative side of things the output really is. Um, so it's extremely important and extremely valuable that the person um, on the receiving end of this addresses it, um, asks what the person was feeling and, and what was happening at the time that they decided to do that, asks for the person doing the gaslighting to take ownership and acknowledgement and responsibility, um, and then that the two of you come together to say, how do we stop this from happening in the future, um, and create some strategies as a collective. Because again, if these things start to become patterned or pervasive, I don't think that it's a healthy relationship to stay in. Um, and gaslighting as a whole is something really important to be aware of. So I will do a, a follow-up video about like how to know if you are accidentally gaslighting yourself. Um, we'll talk about gaslighting with different attachment styles on here as well. And this is it for today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And again, if you want to check out the narcissistic abuse course and how to actually reprogram, heal, overcome these different pain points, um, uh, you can check it out in the link below for free for seven days. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.